All right, team. We're going to make a widget for our library's OPEC. A widget is a small piece of HTML that has some kind of function, like a small computer game or program. In this case, it's going to search our OPEC. What's nice about this is that the library and its patrons can download the widget and add it to their MySpace, Facebook, blog pages, or just about any other social networking site. This way, we've increased the number of entry points to our library and our catalog, and it's getting placed by the patrons in places that are more meaningful and useful to them, without us having to try and guess where our patrons are. And of course, it's just kind of fun. To begin, we need to get the HTML for a widget. Luckily, your OPEC probably has that HTML for us already. By looking at our library's OPEC, for example, you can see that we already have a search box, so all the HTML is already there. To get it, all you need to do is click on View and then View Source. Typically, the HTML will be shown in whatever text editor your computer uses. Since I'm on a Mac, mine is shown in Text Edit. When that opens, you need to find the section of code that starts with the word form that is within an angle bracket and ends with angle brackets that has a slash and the word form again. These are the tags that tell the computer what to do. The first form tag we found was called the start or opening tag, and the second one with the slash is called the end or closing tag. It's important to remember as you do this that you need to make sure you have both the start and end tags or the computer won't know where the code begins or ends. If your OPEC HTML is more complex or has more than one form, sometimes it takes a while to find the section of HTML you need. You might be able to find it easier if you also look for the word search. Many times the programmer who made the code has it labeled so they can find it easier. Or the word search appears in the code itself so you can look for that as well. Now just highlight the section of HTML you want and copy it. Leave that window and your OPEC open because we're going to need it later. Next, we go to widgetbox.com, and this is where we're going to make and share our widget. Take a minute and make your profile, and then log in and click Make a Widget. Within this window, we have a couple of options, but since we're making ours using HTML, click on that link. Now we can name and label our widget. Label something that you think your patrons will look for. Think like a cataloger. After clicking Continue, an HTML editor opens where we are going to do all of our work. What's nice about this is that we can make small changes, click Apply Changes, and test our widget with every change. This way, if you make a mistake, you know it right away. Now just paste your HTML into the editor and type a space and click Apply Changes. Generally, this program color codes the HTML and makes it easier to handle. We can now preview our widget as we edit it. You can change the size of the widget preview if, like mine, parts are cut off from view. So we have all of our HTML in our editor, but it probably looks a little confusing. So now we want to organize our code so it makes a little more sense and makes it easier to read. We're going to do this by finding each of those beginning and end tags, putting the cursor between them, and pressing enter. This starts each piece of code on a new line, and you'll start to see some patterns emerge. We can also remove some excess HTML by removing the division ID attributes. However, you can leave these in if you want, since they don't affect it in any way. Either way, after doing this, the code will begin to make much more sense and should look similar to this. Now we're ready to start making our widget. The first thing we're going to do is add an attribute that makes the widget open in the search results in a new window. At the end of the first line of the code, type form target equals quote underscore the word blank and then close the quotes. Next, we need to find the action attribute. This defines what website the widget will search. We get this from the URL of our OPEC search screen, where we got the HTML in the beginning. That's why it was so important to keep the screen open. Just copy and paste it into your widget box code in this space. If there's something that will go wrong with your widget, this is probably it. It might take some editing to get the URL exactly correct, but generally, you can just copy it from the top of the OPEC search screen. Make sure, though, that the URL starts with HTTP colon slash slash. Now we can test our widget for the first time. Click Apply Changes and go to our preview. Type in some book that you know your library has and press Enter. The result should appear in a new window. If you don't get the search results or some error, the problem is almost definitely with the URL of your search and the action attribute. Go there and keep playing with it until you get the URL correct. You can get different e URLs if you go to other pages in your OPEC. The most simplified one is probably the correct one. Now, for all intents and purposes, your widget is finished. But well, we're going to do a couple more things to make it a little more user-friendly and look a little nicer. First, since our search field is so long, we're going to want to sort shorten it. If you want to make yours longer or shorter, this is where you do it. 
Find the attribute that says size equals, and there will be a number in quotes. This is the number of characters long that the search field is. Change it to whatever you want and click Apply Changes. And don't forget to test your widget with every change. Just in case you accidentally mess something up, you'll know right away. In our preview, you can see that we have some things on the same lines that would make more sense to have on separate lines. So let's break this up a bit. First, we want to decide where the line breaks are going to be. Generally, I use the label attribute to help me figure it out. This attribute is where the words such as search, within, limit to are in the search code and where they show up in the preview. So typically, I add a line break just before each label attribute. The tag for a line break is an angle bracket, the letters B and R, and then another angle bracket. This would be like pressing enter in Microsoft Word when you want to start a new paragraph, and you don't need a closing tag. As you can see after reading the line break tag and clicking the apply changes link, the fields make a little more sense. Once again, don't forget to test your widget. Next, in order to simplify things a little bit, we're going to remove a search field. Since some OPECs have many possible search fields, it's good to know how to simplify them a little. In this example, I'm going to remove the records per page option. I typically find the field I want to remove by the label tag. Once I find it, I delete the label and everything between the select tags, including the options attributes. And remember to always make sure that when you delete something, you delete both the open and closing tags. Now we want to add the title at the top of our widget so people will know what it is when they see it on other people's pages. To do this, I'm going to add the title to the top of the HTML. If I only type the title here, it would show up in regular small font, the same as the rest of the text in the widget. But I want the title to really stand out, so I'm going to put it in bold with the strong attribute. I do this by typing angle brackets with the word strong for the beginning tag and angle brackets with the slash for the end tag. After clicking on the apply changes link, you should see it show up in the preview. Again, don't forget to test your widget. These changes probably changed the size of your widget since we started, so change the size of the preview once again. This is important because this will be the size of your widget when it's installed on yours or other people's websites. And at this point, we're almost done. All that's left is publishing your widget. Even if you don't want to publish it, you still have the code for the widget for any other website you might have. Once you do publish your widget, you can see how many people have installed it, how many times it has been used, and other statistical information for the library's OPAC widget. Now you can quickly and easily install this on your various Web 2.0 accounts by simply selecting the site you want to install it on, copying the code, and then pasting it into the website. I will say that every once in a while I can't get the widget to work on some new website somewhere. In that case, I use the raw code that I made in the widget box and copy and paste that where I want it. So now, your patrons can get this widget to add your OPEC to their websites quickly and easily, and you'll learn some HTML. If you want to learn more HTML, I recommend checking out w3schools.com for a great online interactive course in web programming. And as always, team, comment, criticize, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks, team.